We've got a really sweet card today designed to support someone who might be going through a rough time. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm going to share a beautiful card project to support someone who might need just to be reminded it's okay to not be okay. The technique is so simple, but the products are beautiful. So to see that card and be inspired to create something like this yourself, stick around. That card project is coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'm going to be using today featuring this beautiful die cut, this Posy, and it's just a very elegant little die cut that I am going to cut out a few times to build up some dimension. I'm going to create a painterly, I guess a brush stroke background with this stencil. And then this is the set, it's called So Sorry. And the greeting, I love all of these greetings, especially no card can make this better, but you don't have to be okay today. I like that to send to someone because I think we tend to wanna to push people through hard times and sometimes we just need to be with them and remind them it's okay to not be okay. I have some beautiful colors that I'm going to create my little background with. They're very peaceful and soft. So we are gonna start out with some ink blending let me get some paper and my stamp and stencil mat. Starting out with a piece of cardstock, and I'm going to take my little protector, my acetate, off here, and I'm just going to put this USA2 panel. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half, right onto the stencil mat. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I do want to have some overlapping of things happening here. So it doesn't really matter, I guess about this part, but this will hold it down. And then I'm gonna use some masking. Let's see here. And I'm gonna cover that. And I'm going to cover this like that. So I'm isolating my areas that I'm going to be using today. And I'm gonna start out here with Cheeky. Oh, that's loud, my paper towel is getting down there. This is how I clean my brushes. I don't wash them very often. I just wipe them down between colors until most of the color starts to come off. It takes a bit, but also doing this kind of refreshes your brush. I like doing that, so I will be doing that on all of my brushes. Have a little piece of scratch paper here. Actually, I think I can zoom in a bit. All right, so my stencil is held into place by the mat, and we're gonna, we're gonna get our cheeky like this, and we're gonna start in the center and blend out. And actually, I just realized I have the wrong color. Okay, we're starting in the center. The center has gotta be yellow. Oh, Kathy. All right, same thing. Hold that thought. Let's try that again. We are starting with, <laughs> with yellow, okay? This is my first color because I'm going to be blending out. And if I'm going in rainbow order where the center is, right, we need to, well, we need to make sure that our rainbow is in the center. And now what I'm gonna do as well, I'm gonna just blend a little heavy in the middle, like that. Okay, and then just fade it. Not even worried, but I wanna keep it kind of focused so I get some of the edges, right, but not much. Then we're gonna pick up our stencil, like that, and that's gonna be our mark now. We are gonna move down a little bit. And again, it's nice, easy to line this up because you just keep it within that six inch stencil area. And we're gonna go down to the next color. I wanna have a tiny bit of overlap here. Okay, like that. Now I'm going to keep the same post-it in place. I'm going to bring in my, I was confused here, my celery. Okay. We're gonna ink up our celery. Get a little more on there. And again, stay in the center, right there, like that. And then fade. Kind of keep it light, all right? This is such a quick way to create a background. Lining that up again, holding that, and I'm going to get my spring. This is a color I haven't used much yet. Um, so I'm excited about this. Load up. Oh, that's pretty. That's gonna be very pretty. And again, mostly focus in the center, okay? 
like that. And then soft, soften it out. Let's soften it out a little. So isn't that fun looking so far? And actually, I feel like I should keep going in the rainbow. Uh, I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna go grab another ink. Because of this small area, I'm gonna be able to have more colors of the rainbow. I'm going to bring in sea foam next. So we're transitioning and I'm gonna have room for purple. I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen up top, but you know, stay with me, we'll, we'll make it work. And again, a little darker in the center here, like that. And then as soft as I can make, as soft, I can't say the word soft, as I can blend it. It's a little sweepy, a little sweepy sweepy. I kind of like how the ink is catching on the template. It's kind of giving me a cool look. I actually really like that. Okay, gonna come down. One more, and again, just a slight overlap. All right, we're gonna bring in our lilac. And again, this is gonna be our bottom color. And it's just kind of pulling down some of that ink that's pooling a bit. But I am gonna wipe this off before hitting the middle again, okay? Because I feel like that is going to need to happen. So let's flip this up like that. And now I'm just gonna give this a little spray with some rubbing alcohol just to clean that surface. Take one of my paper towels and just get all of that off. Just a little bit. Again, keeping that same line. Actually, you know what would be cute? I'm gonna flip it. I am going to flip this just to give it a slightly different pattern going up and again, we're gonna mask and isolate. You could use mix and match all these stripes or brush strokes. I just thought it would be fun to do, you know, the one. So again, this is a really great way to just get some mojo going when you're, you know, you don't know what you wanna do. Repeat a shape of some kind like this on a, with a stencil onto a background. This is so simple, right? We're just gonna kinda of flick you out a little like that. Ooh, that had a bit of an angle. I don't mind, I think it's gonna be fun. It's going to be fun. Now let's go here and move on to the cheeky, okay? Again, come here and maybe what I can do is, uh, I think I, did I choose the wrong one? Oh my gosh, I may, no, no, I'm good. I think I'm gonna flip back. We're just, you know, we're just playing. We're just playing and we're flipping back cause we're just gonna make something happen. And this is, cheeky, okay? And I'll just kind of keep that in the center too, like that. Let's see how that looks. And now we have this thing. Now I actually think I'm gonna grab one more color and I'm going to put a pink up top. I'm gonna bring in Carnation, but I'm gonna go relatively light with it. So I'll probably just tap off quite a bit here. Got my brush, load up, tap, 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 tap. I just want a light pink above the red. That's gonna be just lovely. This could be done, we could be done. Now I just have this sort of wonky pattern, right? to be a backdrop for my die cut. Now, if I wanted to, and I actually do, I'm gonna take one more down here with what is left on my brush and just make a very soft purple base for a very light lilac. Like that. Just a little more color down there at the bottom. And it almost gives that look of like you have more colors than you actually do by just having that a little bit lighter. So that's the panel that I'm ink blending, all done. I am gonna go ahead and get set up to die cut a number of those. I am going to cut out at least, well, let's see, at least a few of these. Pop that on my Gemini plate. And let's run it through the die cut machine. <sighs> All right, 
I've been thinking about changing where the camera is on the die cut machine because it vibrates every time it comes out. Oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, we're going to pop this out, get all of this lovely piece, and, oh, come on, keep going. Like that. I will pop everything out here and just go like that. I like a little foam mat because then you just kind of push through and you're not going to bend anything and hurt anything, right? We're just poking, poking, poking. So let me finish poking all this out and I'm going to cut out at least three more, maybe, maybe only two, but I think three would be nice. I don't know. I want it to have lots of dimension on my card panel. This is certainly not <laughs> reinventing any wheel, but I just think the sweetness of the card and the greeting is what this card is all about. So go ahead and do a few more of those off camera. I've got my three die cuts here. And sometimes if there's any, oh, I like to call them die hairs, which is not really hair, right? it's paper. Sometimes I will take my very, very low tack tape or any really low tack tape, but this works really nicely because it is so low tack. And you can just go over, do a little burnish, and you know, just if your die cuts look a little hairy, they look a little hairy. If they need a haircut, right? You just, but be careful too, because you want to make sure you hold your die cut and peel your paper back, or peel your tape back gently, right? There's so much on the tape. Now this shows up a lot more when it's a colorful tape, but there's, those are hairs, my friend. We have just de-haired our die cuts. All right, I'm gonna do the others and then we'll glue them together. I love my spray glue. I know it's not good to breathe in, so I don't spray this all day long, but it's so nice and quick for these dyes. But here's something that happens if you use this product. Your nozzle gets super gunky. Look at how gunky that is, see that? Gets really gunky and then eventually it's almost like you can't even spray out of it, right, without scraping that off. So here's what I do. This is this is a great little tool. I have this product called Undo. I've had this since my scrapbooking days. It's a great product for removing adhesive. You can also use something like a Gooby Gone, but that's kind of oily and I, I like the Undo because it really does dry kind of like a, an alcohol. It's very, very fast drying. So what I do, I will undo my Undo. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. And then I just pour some right onto the, the nozzle. Just, just let it drip. Just drip it on. Just let it drip. Close it up. Okay. And then I just let it sit for a minute. Okay. Then just take a paper towel or kitchen towel or something and just scrape, scrape, scrape. And you will clear your nozzle this way. Now you might already do this. And if it still looks goopy, again, hit it some more, right? Just a few drops, let it sit. Let that adhesive break up and get her out of there. I probably do this every so often and it just gets it cleaner. And now I am ready to go ahead and spray on the backs of my die cuts. So I am gonna do the spraying just off camera and then I'll bring it into the frame to add them. I've got one of my little friends here, and sometimes I'll just put this on a piece of cardstock scrap so I can see what I'm doing. And I guess I'll just start right on one side and do my best. Now I have gotten better at this. Uh, it Well, I've been doing it now <laughs> since 2000. 2017 when I started making cards, right? So I, I am better at it. And don't get frustrated if it if you're not great at lining up stacked die cuts. Just take some time. That's all. And I use different tweezers for my sticky stuff. And then again, I, I clean off my tweezers also with the undo. Oh boy, I did a terrible job. Let's see if we can let's see if we can salvage it. There is a little playtime with this, not much but a little, see that? You can kind of wiggle it into place. And now I have my little friend and I'm gonna take a brick if I can find one, well, somewhere. I'm gonna take my share Handmade Kindness and try not to get it too gluey. I'm gonna let that set. 
while I find a die to make my panel. I'm gonna bring in one of my A2 layers dies, and probably my favorite one is the third one in, which is three and a half by four and three quarters, because it gives you such a beautiful crop. Now here's the thing though, I don't have my greeting yet, so I almost wonder if I should wait and do my greeting, or at the very least, I could visualize. I want to use, you don't have, you don't have to be okay today, and I could do that, I could do that on vellum, but I don't know, the vellum is so hard to attach, but boy, that would be pretty. Hmm, let me think about that. I actually, that would be so soft and elegant if I could figure it out. I may try it, but either way, I'm pretty confident in this cut, so let me, trim this out very quickly so that I have my panel ready for my note card. I'll go ahead and cut that out off camera. I'm going to take the greeting off that I want to use. I'm just gonna try this. If it works on vellum, fantastic. If it doesn't, you know, but I just thought this would be such a soft and simple way to greet the card or to add a greeting. I'm not, I guess I'm not greeting the card, but I'm going to prime this with my finger, right? To get this ready for ink. Let me grab my embossing ink. I've got Simonson's stamp and I've got a new thing to show you today that I am very excited about. Simonson's stamp has just introduced their own anti-static powder tool. I love the size. I love how easy this is to use. The brush is encased in this little friend like that, all you do is you unscrew this and fill in your powder and it works really well. I've been playing with it and I have been very impressed. Now I have other anti-static powder tools, but if you don't have one, you might wanna check this out. It's a great little friend to have for crafting. So let's ink up with our embossing ink. Get a nice, coating on this and I'm going to bring this down to the paper and transfer the ink. I'm just going to use my little press tool here. My stamp and bud just helps me apply pressure. I'm not going to stamp this more than once though because on the vellum I want it to just stay as is. Now I'm getting my paper catch ready and I'm just going to add some Simon Says Stamp or white powder to this and it's going to be very simple, right? So bring this in and my white powder. This is the fine detail white. Sprinkle this on like that, let that sit. And of course it just slides right off. And that is why anti-static powder is great to have. If you ever pour your powder on and it sticks everywhere in, in addition to where you've stamped, Again, anti-static powder and this new tool is fantastic. I'm going to pour this back in. Like that. All right. Wipe away this and I'll grab my heat tool so we can melt that powder. Vellum and embossing powder, they melt so fast, but look at that transfer of awesomeness. All right, let me get the coordinated die so I can cut this out. I have the coordinating die taped into place and I'll just quickly cut this out off camera. All right, pop that out. And now I have a beautiful little see-through greeting that I, I have an idea of how this can work. And I almost wondered, and I'm just gonna do it real quick. I'm gonna cut out an extra layer too to see what would happen if I doubled up my layer and glued it with spray adhesive. I cut that out too. We have our beautiful little friend. And that's just, I mean, this is such a formula that's so easy to follow, right? And then what if I just put a little greeting like that on top of it? Now, another thing that I could do, this is where I wanted to see what would happen if I doubled it up so it became a little more cloudy I mean, I could do that. It might make it stand out a bit more. I don't know, what do you think? Would you do one layer so you could see through it better? I'm go you know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put spray adhesive on this. It'll kind of be like Xy, oh, or, or dots. No, spray adhesive. Let me do this really quick off camera. If this looks bad, I will start over 
with the greeting, but I don't really think it will. I think this will be just fine. It'll give it just the tiniest bit of, you know, something, something, oh, something, something underneath it. Let's get that into place. And, and what's nice with the spray glue, it doesn't really show. You know what I mean? I could do another layer of that if I wanted to. And you still get that sort of cloudy effect. But now I'll be able to put a couple little daubs of glue in, in key places for popping this onto the card. So now the question is, what do I want to do for a note card? I might actually pick out something colorful or pale colorful just to pick up a little of that rainbow. So let me grab a piece of cardstock that I think will work. Okay, I am going to use lemon chiffon and it doesn't look too green on here. I just... It's a little green. This is lemon chiffon. It's a beautiful color from Simon Says Stamp and it's very pale and you'll see in the photo at the end of this video too that one of these days I'll, I'll fix the colors. I've heard from other content creators that yellow is one of those colors and I've done some adjusting but it's still well it's still looking a little green my friends and we'll, we'll get there. All right. So scoring, folding, let me look right down over my paper. My head might get in the way for a second here. I just want to make sure that I'm framing that out. Oh, that's so pretty. See, and it's kind of cool to take the center color of your rainbow as your note card color. Oh, I love it. See, this is very random. It's very painterly. And now I'm going to, I think I will do lick glue for this because sometimes with the liquid glue I have a little bit better luck. I just have to find where my liquid glue is. I'll just work my way around with little dots all over the back. All right, spray glue would also be very quick here, but again, sometimes I just like that playtime. Get my little glass paperweight here and I'm just going to center it right over the ink blended design and let that sit. Now there's only a few areas that are going to have the contact and I'm not too worried about this showing through. So maybe, maybe what I'll do is just put, put the glue on the contact areas. Or here's what I was thinking, look at this. You can see through, in fact, I'll zoom in. You can see through, so what you can do, and I won't have any on the outer edge, so maybe I'll hold it like that. Look, well, now I can't see through it. I'm going to look through here and put tiny dots where the letter forms are, even though they're not really thick, that's okay. And even though they're not gonna make contact everywhere, I think just a little bit of glue is going to be just fine to hold this onto the card. So I've got little bits of glue here and I actually think that's going to be enough, right? That's just a, maybe a little more over here. You know what? It's going to dry nice and clear. I think it's going to be fine. And it's only going to make contact where it makes contact. So let's lift this up. I'm going to switch hands and I'm going to put it right over the blooms like that and make sure it's centered and now that and I'm gonna have to trust that yeah that looks pretty straight now I'm just gonna let that sit for a few minutes so that that can really adhere nicely okay so I've left that on for about a minute but what I like about this it is held in place where it needs to be although I could put the tiniest amount more, let's see, under here. I think I will just squeeze, I'm gonna get it on the edge and just pop it under like that, okay? There we go. So you kind of have to play with these vellum, right? Cause you don't want to have glue everywhere cause then it would press down and stick to the paper and I wanted that little bit of float time, but you can't really see through that at all. Meaning like you can't see the glue and I think that's gonna be just fine. Woo! All right, I'm gonna leave it for a little bit more. I thought a pretty little rhinestone. I think these are so beautiful because they're so small. And I'll have one more maybe up top like that. Like this. 
True story, I forgot to have my audio actually turned on while adding the sequence, and then I forgot to record the actual boop. But I thought this arrangement of sequence would look just beautiful to finish out the card. So that is the finished card project. You can find links to the supplies I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I have a new video to share. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you back here with another card project soon. To see a few more card projects that look and feel a lot like the one I created today, check out the two thumbnails below, and I will see you in those videos.